Hello, and welcome to Maximal Fire. I'm Alex. I'm Johnny. And this is the Titanicus tier list. So, Johnny, it's been, what, three, four weeks since we last recorded a podcast, and we thought it was probably about time for us to commit some social suicide on the channel. Oh, yeah. Uh, my body is ready. <laughs> so... <laughs> it's risky. It's risky what we're doing here. Um, yeah. But hopefully we don't get too eviscerated the community or comment section. So I, I'm, I'm going to go right out there and, and blame our listeners and the people on the discord um for this episode so this was kind of sparked um by a conversation on our listeners questions channel on discord um from a guy called auron and his question was essentially around talking about how um there is a bit of a perception out there i guess that some units are not worth taking if they are not quote unquote optimized um units for the game and kind of like what what would make you take them you know would it have to be a narrative um event to be worth taking some of the lesser known weapons i guess or or units um and although that in itself is is a pretty hefty question um which is a very difficult one to actually answer um because i've always been of a firm opinion that there will always be something at the bottom like there's it doesn't matter how much balancing you do or how many points adjustments that you do by changing one thing you shift the meta so you just make something now worth more than it, it was before in, in points like if you make Vulcan mega bolters 20 points more are they still worth taking arguably probably yes but then it opens up other things into the mix as well so sure. we thought we would take this one step further and we thought there's a lot of units now in AT, and the, and the game has been going for, oh, well, since 2018, so what, year five um, of the game. Legions Imperialis is coming up. It's still not out yet at this point of recording. Yes. Um, but the game is pretty mature. Um, we've had quite stable units for a while now. Legions will hopefully shake that up and throw in a few more units here and there but we thought now is a good time i think to kind of look across every unit which is in a in at and cast our vote as to what we think are the best ones and what we think are utter trash <laughs> oh yeah here comes the tier list episode everyone <laughs> so the youtube channels destination at some point <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah it's um let's just say that i'm expecting this to spark debate now i think we need to caveat that caveat this right at the beginning of the episode um by saying it's an opinion piece it's our opinion it's by no means definitive um we are idiots we are we are <laughs> we are idiots so why would you listen to us anyway so yeah <laughs> um but one thing we realized very quickly when we were pulling these lists together um, and you will see as well that Johnny doesn't necessarily... This is my list, essentially, that we're talking about here. Johnny doesn't 100% agree with everything that's on here, so hopefully that will be interesting discussion. But we cannot and could not really factor in specific Legio boosts and changes to these units. Now, I'm sure that if you run a certain Legio, you will probably shout at the screen saying, how can you say that about X? Um, they are awesome when I play them in my Legio because my Legio does X to them. Well, we obviously can't factor that in across 40-odd Legios. So we are looking kind of at a mana pull level. We're looking at a specific unit level. We're looking at a cost level, all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, it's, it's going to be a ride, I think. And like we were saying... Please leave your thoughts, your comments. Stick it in the in the stick your comments in the comments, and let us know what you would change. And by all means, go onto the tier list website and remix it and 
send us on the uh, Discord server kind of like what your opinion is of of what is the strongest down to what is the worst unit in AT. So it's going to it's going to cause some debate and I hope that it mm-hmm. does because that is pretty much the entire reason that we're doing it. Here to sow chaos. That's yeah. all it is. We yeah. just want to, you know, we're going to throw the cat amongst the pigeons and then we're mm-hmm. going to disappear and leave you guys to it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but before we get into that, um, just one or two points. Um, just had a couple of changes over the last couple of uh, days. Um, so you might be excited, you might not care at all. Uh, but due to quite popular demand, uh, we have arranged for a series of merch uh, to be available. There's some Maximal Fire merch, which will be available to buy through Redbubble. Now, we are currently waiting for the shop to be approved by Redbubble, but we're hoping by the time that this episode drops... It might well be up. So if it is, we'll drop the comment, uh, drop the link in the description for the show notes. So if you want to get yourself some T-shirts, some baseball caps, some pin badges, stickers, any of that that you want to represent, um, maximal fire at any events that you go to, you can do that now. So um, I, I had a look at it, I, it, it. You know, I'm going to probably buy some myself because uh, it looks cool. I'm quite. Ha- oh, I, yeah. I, I'm thinking maybe a couple of hoodies uh, might be quite good for events, and uh, it cuts out the middleman when we have to go to the printers, Johnny. So exactly exactly yeah and so we can have backups for the events as well so exactly those exactly. really sweaty day ones hit we've got yeah yeah we've got, we've got merch to represent day I'll, two you know how it goes you know and if we get big time and i'm talking real big time i'm thinking t-shirt cannon at beachheads oh God. you know mm. and we'll load up the t-shirt cannon with some maximal fire t-shirts but i'm talking like mega numbers here right guys so if you haven't subscribed to the channel do it if we can hit 10,000 uh, subscriptions before Beach End, maybe we'll do it then. Maybe. You know, we, we'll try not to maud Flanders anyone, but I can't, I, I, can't promise anything. I, I think we're pretty safe on 10K as well in the next six months, so <laughs> we don't have to worry too much seriously. We'll about. eat the flip-flop on my foot. If, uh, <laughs> but that's also, a challenge. If you want to see me eat a flip-flop live, live I'll, yeah. I'll do it for 10K. Yeah, absolutely. Do it I think we'd, we'd, we'd roast them up on the barbie and do it together if we uh, we hit 10K. But that's that's... You know, I think we've got a long way to go still before then. If we hit 2K, that's probably a, a more realistic target. Um, that's like the global population of Titanicus players, isn't it? So I mean, it's got to be a lot of that. them. Yeah, it's got to be a good portion of them, certainly in the UK. Um, but yeah, do give us a like and a subscribe on YouTube. Um, it all helps. Um, you know, share the video and um and yeah get involved in the discussion jump on discord um we've also made a couple of changes to our patreon uh, account in the last couple of days so you can now subscribe annually if you wish it seems to be the thing everybody's doing at the moment um so we have three tiers one pound three pound five pound every month um if you back us in at it for a year essentially do an annual version you save 10 percent on your um annual subscription so you'll get um all of the benefits that you would normally get um, and you save a little bit of money and you help us out at the same time. So um, yeah, um, we're also kind of looking at other ways that we can start kind of like paying back our um, our patrons with little things within our power to do so. We're experimenting with um, adless videos to our Patreon at the moment. That's by no means set in steel. Uh, set in steel, set in stone. Steel, yeah. um, it works for Titanic. I, I suppose it does, yeah. It's, no, it's, it's not set in... Um, the foundries of Mars. The man team. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, um, if it works, it's something we want to continue. So um, just if you watch on YouTube, obviously lots of ads. Um, it can be annoying, especially if you are in the flow of a discussion to get kind of cut up by an ad. So um, adless videos, hopefully coming to Patreon. Um, and that is it. So are you greased, Johnny? Are you lubricated? Oh for the evening i am so greased <laughs> shall we uh, uh should we take the uh the dangerous steps into yeah so before we bring up thing. my 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 super fancy whatever you would call it graph chart tier list i suppose list there we go yeah um we have uh we split basically all of the units into one of six categories so by no means are any of these necessarily bad. Well, I suppose one is. <laughs> one is bad. Um, but um, we, we've we tried to kind of... It's not just 
a case of tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four, tier five, tier six. We've we've tried to kind of put some justification why we put them around here. So we have S, which is the top tier. Um, at S, we are basically judging these to be consistent game winning titans or, or knights, we should say, like units. Um, these are often MVPs. Um, they put a lot of work in, a lot of shift. They'll often be the cornerstone of a um, um, of your games. Down to A, these are the kind of solid, dependable section. Rarely a bad uh, choice to be included um, in your games. Um, going down into B, these guys are still very much very solid. Um, however, quite often may require some sort of support to get the most out of them. Um, C. Uh, we have gone for good in larger games, certain mana pools or auxiliary roles, um, like additional bonus titans or bonus knight um, banners, that kind of stuff. Um, and then D is our kind of circumstantial or situational inclusion. Like the, you've got to kind of have a bit of a reason to include these. Uh, and then that leaves us with E, which sadly is basically don't bother. Um, you've got to have a pretty good reason to include these in here uh, and we'll we'll go we'll go through this i guess as we um progress through so with that said i think it is uh time to bring in our fancy chart look yeah. at that the power of technology um and we're going to build this as we go johnny mm. yes um i cannot see the chart so bear bear with <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, you can't, can you? I'm I'm mentally going to be picturing it. Um, I sent you a, and, I sent uh, you a photograph of it the other day, so you can yeah, at least you bring did. it up on your phone. I'll get it up on. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. The power of modern technology. At its finest. Right. So, going through these alphabetically, um, that is the only particular order that we are um, doing at this particular point in time. Um, we are going to start with the noble Acheron Knight. Okay, so the Acheron is the is a Serastus Knight variant. Uh, for those of you who, um, well, don't know, I guess well, you know. I suppose if you play AT, you may not have come across these if you're a new player. Um, the Acheron is the uh, one of two models that you get in the Acheron and Castigator box set currently uh, for Adeptus Titanicus. Whether or not they change this uh, with Legions, who knows. Um, but at the moment, you get two Acherons, two Castigators. The Acheron is the knight which has the Acheron Flame Cannon. Uh, this is, um, as it would expect, it's a flame weapon. It is a, um, a template weapon. It's got a reasonably good strength of strength 7. Now, I have put the Acheron Knight into D. So That's fair. D, and there are a few. There are there are people who really like the Acheron, and I've had people argue um, that this should be slightly higher. Um, but I have I have settled across everything else to ultimately end up with this guy in D. And the reason why I have chose that is that it is a reasonably decent close combat um, knight. It has got a good close combat weapon. It got um, two strength seven. Um, rending attacks, which is not to be sniffed at. Um, it's very quick, like all Serastus Knights. Twelve inch movements, really, really good. Um, it's good at flanking actions. It is, uh, you know, also of a good scale that you can hold it back for outflanking. Um, and it's got a reasonably okay structure points at five. Um, the the flame cannon, as I said, is okay strength wise. Um, but it is very, very short range. Um, this does, however, get a certain buff with the Ignis Maniple. Um, so specifically in the Ignis Maniple, it is slightly better than if you were to take it on its own. Now, the the kind of against on these, I guess, is firstly short range. Um, so it is a, a short range um, knight. It is essentially going to be something that you're going to want to push up and probably try and get into close quarters. Um and you can't tar uh, target with a flame cannon or a template weapon. So although you were going to get a reliable amount of hits out of that flame cannon at strength 7, you don't know where those hits are going to land. 
So if you're going up against something quite big, like say a, a warlord, for instance, you could not have. <laughs> you couldn't have. You you might be missing out on some uh, some additional damage that other um, units in the game would be able to capitalize on. Its biggest downside, however, and you may see a pattern as these kind of go al go along, is other knight chassis do close combat better. So it's it kind of falls into that sort of strange area where it's good, it's okay, it can be buffed by certain mana pools, but at the same time, if you are using this and wanting this um, for a close combat knight, other knights do it better. And also other knights do it cheaper. So this is the most expensive um, basic Serastus knight um, hull, like the non um Mechanicum style hull. Uh, I believe the, I believe it's thirty five points for each additional um, Acheron, whereas I think it's twenty points for each additional Castigator or Lancer. So, um, those are off the top of my head. It's more expensive. I may have got those points slightly out, but it's more expensive. Um, so all you're really getting for those points is, yeah, that that strength seven flame st storm weapon, which will auto hit, granted, but you don't know where it's going to hit. What's your thoughts on that, Johnny? I think it's fair. I think it's fair to say it's high D D tier. High tier. D tier. Um, I think this comes uh, back to my uh, long standing issue with flame weapons in AT, which is why don't they add reactor heat? Um, I think if this, if this, outside of something like legions imperialis or if you're in a knight heavy meta where this might actually shine a normal game of at what is this really doing for you what's a template for you um so i i think d tier is is very fair like you said lancers um specifically will outperform um the archeron uh archon archeron acheron Acheron. there we go We'll get there at the end. Um, I don't see uh, in what situation where it feels better to have a flame a template weapon than it does to have a targetable lancer lance, um, or even just like a, a melter cannon on some of uh, other knight chassis. Um, even with the lack of targeting, I don't know what the... I, I can't think of many situations where that template will actually... Pay off um, over po having the ability to target. Possibly against other knight lists, but even then at strength seven, although you'll be hitting a lot of targets, at strength seven, you're only in that kind of second level of ion saves. So, you know, they're still probably going to get a good ion save against you, at which point. It. Exactly. Um, don't get me wrong, when Legion's rock, you know, t turns up this thing, yeah, it'll fuck. But before then, um, you know, against, uh, you know, in a, okay, even if it was good against Knights, this is 80. We're playing with Titans most of the time. Um, just don't really see what it provides. Um, but, I, you know, the Saras, uh, the, the, um, the chassis is, is, is solid. It's just, it's, it's, it's massively outperformed by the alternatives there. I think it falls so. into that category of like, um, if you fancy running something different, run this, and yeah. it, it'll probably be okay. But it would never be your your kind of go to. Um, for me, certainly for, not for me. It wouldn't be my kind of go to in, auto include or the first thing I think about when I've got those sort of points points that I want to spend. I think we should also caveat as well that we are coming across this from the point of view of a Titan battle group, um, specifically. Like we will try and kind of um, augment some of these discussions with a knight household in mind, um, but predominantly we're looking at this from inclusion in a list with titans, um, like your kind of standard game of AT, um, I guess. I guess you could say. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think they're they're distinctly below mid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're okay. They're okay. okay. Um, I think one of the biggest problems with it is that you need to buy two sets of 40 quid 
knights to get a banner of four. Um, Because I think most of these kind of um, uh, knights, you, you want to really be taking in threes and fours, probably threes. There's reason to take some in twos, uh, but obviously at those kind of lower um, numbers of, of knights, then they start suffering from their ion shield saves. Um, so you miss uh, GW blister packs, doesn't it? Hmm. And a couple of AT blisters with just two little knights in there or something. Be sick. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. There's the first one down. That is the Acheron um, in the, let's say, the high, higher D category. Yeah, high D um, there. Next up is uh, the teeny tiny Armager. Now, the Armager is a very interesting uh, little knight. I've run the Armager a couple of times and I have had a lot of fun with them. And I have put the Armagers in C. So one higher slightly than the Acheron. Now, one of the main things that the Armager has going for it is it is exceptionally cheap. Um, for each additional knight that you're adding into the base three, it's 25 points. So, you know, you're talking, you know, for, for 100 extra points, you, you know, banners of kind of like, what's that? Do the maths quickly. Three basic. What is it? 35. Sorry, what? <laughs> 35, 25, 25. <laughs> That's 85. <laughs> yeah, basically they're cheap. They're cheap as chips. You can get a lot in under 200 points. Um, although they are teeny tiny, you cannot ignore them as well. And if you've watched the um, the bat rep that we did with our Audax versus um, um, Tritonus, you will see that you cannot mm-hmm. ignore uh, the Armager Knight. And the reason that that is the case is that often there is quite a few of them because there is a, you kind of you have to take them in reasonable numbers if you're looking at taking these in the minimum of three yeah at that point don't bother unless you're just wanting an extra activation for a few turns until they die um but their close combat weapon is okay it's only it's strength six but when you factor in flanks um you know and they they move 11 inches which is pretty quick so they can get a decent charge off with numbers as well strength six in the flanks strength seven you know they're going to be bad times for anything other than a warlord titan really just with that weapon um but where it really does come into its own is um the thermal spear um weapon that it has now it's not obviously designed as a close combat weapon but it it's basically good in close combat you get this into close combat you're talking um hitting on threes in close combat and strength eight fusion attacks and that is where you can really mess up a um a warlord titan's day as i think you found out johnny i i did find it out um yeah no they're they're nasty little buggers yeah so they they cannot be ignored um you have to kind of deal with them they have reasonably good ion saves not bad at all really kind of fairly okay for considering the size of them um, but their main benefit is the distraction Khan effects. Like, to my point, you kind of have to deal with them. They're a cheap unit, but you have to deal with them because if you don't deal with them, then they can really hurt. So you're going to have to put some weapons into them to try and shake them or to get rid of them. Um, their big downsize, downside, however, is you have to take another banner of knights in your list to allow you to take them. And that means that you're already, although these are cheap, you're obviously at that point then kind of adding in another um, chunk of change um, for those additional knights. So when I said earlier on, like often you will take these in banners of, um, Serastus in banners of three, two becomes like a reasonable thing to include if your goal is to kind of purely get some armages into your force you know keep keep that as keep the knights as cheap as possible to give you enough points to bring some armages to the fray um and that that can work pretty well but that cheap point cost is somewhat diluted by the fact that you're going to have to take some quest or some lancers or something just to get these guys into the into your forces um, their biggest downside is how expensive the actual models are. So I think at last time I checked, they were about £37 for three from Forgeworld 
I really, really hope that they get the plastic glove for um, Legion's Imperialis. I've got a big feeling that they will, especially because we've seen things like the Sentinels, which I suppose are probably about the same size for the Solar Auxilia. Um, but with those three, only two of them are really any use. The two Fusion uh, Lance uh, armages are the ones that you want. The 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 auto cannon ones are, and I know they've all got specific names, but you know whatever. Um, uh, the auto cannons are Helgorins. Thank you. Okay. Um, <laughs> but we're talking like I think it's one strength four hit with ordnance. So, yay. I mean, I guess with weight of numbers, if you've got eight of them or something, that's eight strength four. Be good at shield stripping, but generally speaking, you you you'll get better value for money out of taking the um, the thermal lances instead. Um, their other downside is that a stiff breeze will kill them. <laughs> they've got <laughs> they've got two structure points each, so one critical, which is they can be critted on a fourteen, so one maximal fire plasma gun hitting like rolling a four is going to kill two of them mm. and those deaths can can quickly start racking up so good little fun unit um i've enjoyed running them um definitely some downsides to them but there is a lot of play in them if that's the way that you choose to do it um i've seen people use them in night households as well to try and get those extra activations in which can be really really difficult um when you are playing a night household um, with your lances. So, yeah, C. Over to you, Johnny. What do you think? Very solid. Very solid call on the C. I agree. And um, I will disagree with you at some point. Don't you worry. But so far, um, you, you've been very, very spot on. Uh, no, yeah. Uh, I think C is pretty fair. Um, I think they are a little bit more survivable than you give them credit for. Because um, in order to... Kill them, shoot them, the other order, um, you actually have to see them. I think yes. that's one of their biggest advantages um, is their size. They are tiny, they are so small, you could put them like not even right up against a building, and anything on the other side of that building is just not going to see them. Um, there's no chance that warlords are, uh, or, or reavers even are, uh, you know, commit so much to get a firing angle on a group of ar armages anyway that's the other thing as well with with them being distraction carn effects do you rather be shooting you know enemy titans or a bunch of little armages um if you can even see them so i think uh i think sees sees a, a, a very fair call for them um being on the receiving end of them they did feel very strong but um not I'm not a world class player, so I'll take that with a with a pinch of salt. But um yeah, no, I think C's C's good. Good. Okay. Yeah. Two down, many more to go. Many um, more to go. You'll probably notice that because we're doing this alphabetically, um most of the Titans are gonna come later on because they all start with the word war. So part mm. a few. So um it's gonna be quite night heavy to start with. And then we'll start seeing some Titans introduced as we go along. So the next up, uh, next one up is the um, Acastus um, Asterius. Now, I've made quite a bold choice with this particular Titan. And mm -hmm. I want to caveat this heavily at the point where... Um, well, let, I know, let, let me caveat it as we discuss it. I'm, I'm just going to go in. I'm going to stick in the Asterius. It's an S. It's, it's right up there. Um, it is one of the best units in the game. Um, each one of them can dish out four strength nine shots from its twin uh, conversion beam cannon. If you're over 24 inches, those hits are blast five inches. And when they're under 24 inches, they're blast um, three inches. Um, and on top of that, you have the six strength four hits with rending from the um, Karaknos mortar battery, so it can strip shields as well. Now, I know you obviously... Take, you could take the mortar away. I still think it would be S tier. 
Yeah. It's so still you could take a full gun away from this this knight. It would still be S tier. Yeah. The the fact that it has the five inch scatter over um twenty four inches means that you're less likely not to hit something as well. So even if you miss, you're still probably gonna hit. They also have that ability that when they get issued an order, which they can pass on a um two plus, I think it is. Three plus, two plus, three plus, I think it is. Um then they get um plus one to their ballistic skill. So they can take a first fire order or a split fire order or something like that where they can still shoot. They have a 360 degree line of sight so they don't suffer any of the limitations of not being able to move or not being able to turn because they don't care. Um, and that means that you've got um, four strength nine shots with blast hitting on a three plus. Um, you can take these guys in um, banners of up to two and that would give you eight strength nine shots. And obviously every one of those that hits is two hits. So if you roll um, all, if you roll eight um, three pluses and you don't miss any, that's 16 hits to one location. So if the shields are down, 16 hits to one location at strength nine, that's probably an insta-kill titan um it certainly would be for like your um reaver or your um um your warhounds but um on top of that you can do it twice <laughs> so like if the first fire of 16 uh dice didn't quite finish the titan off you can do it again in the um in the combat phase so yeah that's that's 32 if yeah 32 strength nine hits you can potentially put out um in one turn uh with one banner of two um a castus asterius and um, they also get that bonus repair being mechanicum knights and the, um so they can repair on a um a six on in the damage control phase they get one point of structure back um and they have very high um structure and armor values so they have seven points of structure each um needing a 17 to crit them so they can take a lot of wearing down and anything short of a strength 12 weapon is well 11 or 12 weapon can't crit them so your plasmas can't crit them um your quakes can't crit them they can obviously shake them still um but you're really looking at getting close enough with a melter or bellicosa or conversion beamer extirpators essentially at that point um on top of this you could take this unit and you could which i believe comes in at 350 points for two so we're talking expensive reaver equivalent for two of these um by comparison um you could take the same unit save yourself 20 points and lose that repair roll ability and you can take the basic upgraded acastus um asterius from the regular plastic um terminal so obviously the models are forge world the forge world ones have their own template and then the ones which come in the plastic boxes they've got their own template of which it can be either a porphyrian or an acastus uh, or an asterius so you can you can save yourself 20 points and maybe even cheaper and do all of that now it does have some downsides um their ion shields are relatively rubbish but I guess they require more to sort of on their armor and just armor tanking a lot of this stuff um, because you can't just chip away with it with your sort of strength four weapons um, as easily. Um, and they are um, expensive. You know, um, they aren't cheap knights to field. Um, they're also auxiliary knights. Um, so you don't care, obviously, if you are in a Titan Manipal because you would take them as auxiliaries anyway, but in a household that obviously makes a difference. Um, and they can be insta-killed. So if you do have strength 12 weaponry against them, on the roll of a 5, you're going to insta-kill one. And yeah, the, the, there's nothing that they can do about that. Effectively, the only counter that I've found to these knights is have strength 12 weapons. And even then you need 5s when you hit them to actually 
take them off the board. That's that's the only thing that can really stop them is that strength 12 weapon. All of this sounds great, but its biggest negative um, for me is its reputation. So this is <laughs> this is what I was kind of like alluding to at the um, uh, when I went into this segment. Right, they have all the casters have got a bit of a spotty reputation for being overpowered. Um, some people love them and don't see what the problem is, uh, which is fine if that's what your meta plays. Um, and obviously, some people absolutely hate them will not have them on the table and a lot of events restrict um a castus from their events uh, for this very reason certainly in titans titan lists often it's reserved so you can take them but you have to take them in a night household that's certainly what we do um because they can and i've seen it happen um on more than one occasion have a significant feel bad impact um, on the game if your opponent's not prepared for it now this is not to say don't take it what i would do is if you want to run these try them out in your local meta play them in friendlies see how they get on because at, at the end of the day if your local meta is kit, kitted out with stuff that can take this out then i can't see them being a problem but my main concern with them is the moment you allow them allow them in your game it kind of becomes an arm an arms race so if people know that these things are allowed, they will take bellicosas because they have to. Um, and at that point, it's this kind of one-upmanship arms race that you're gonna you're gonna struggle with. So, yeah, I think it's a very bad point in a in a game or in a, a game environment where um, you're feeling like you have to take something just to deal with one or two individual units, um, which we've not really had before in AT. Well, I think the community backlash is a little bit... Well, they used to be worse. They used to be able to take them in banners of four. So if you can imagine what a banner of four looks like, it's um, it's pretty horrendous. Um, mm. But they are... They do what they do incredibly well, and I don't think there is a single model um, in the game that can put out as much damage um, as this unit. Its only flaw, really is if your opponent has happened to take the right weapons against you. Um, which in a lot of events, people generally try and take a relatively all-comers list. Um, and so you don't often see as much specialism. Um, but yeah, the Asterius up there at the top, S tier, just try them out. Just be careful um, and be prepared that you are going to give your opponent a really bad time. Any any other thoughts, Johnny? Um, yeah, one word review. Disgusting. 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 Uh, yeah, grim. Don't take them to a game if you haven't told your opponent that you're bringing them, um, or you have a very, you know, very understanding opponent because <laughs> they are, um, yeah, they are bored. They I, in certain games they could be borderline quite unfun to go up against. Um, and and we, we we want to make sure as well that obviously we're we're putting this as S. This doesn't necessarily mean like this is the best. Everyone should take it. That's not the message that we're trying to get across. We we are looking at the rules. We're looking at everything else. And if if it was completely open and we could do whatever we wanted, these guys would absolutely be S tier. Just take with a pinch of salt and um, yeah, try not to lose too many friends. <laughs> Um, okay, next up we have the Atropos. It's four knights starting with A. So the Atropos is the Mechanicum Serastus um, hull. Um, one of my personal favourite um, knights from an aesthetic point of view. I think they look really, really cool. I've got four of them that I've been slowly painting up over a couple of months, which I really need to finish. Um, and these bad boys, uh, well, I have taken those and I've put them into B. So they are, as all Serastus, incredibly fast. You know, they are 12-inch um, movement, good um, scale size, so they can be used for outflanking maneuvers um, or even just being fast enough to run at the table and, and try and get in people's flanks. Um, a banner of three of them is 295 points, so that's like a cheap reaver. So it's it's on the expensive side of the knights, but not terrible. 
Um, I, I, you do generally see these quite often in night household lists, more so than in Titan lists. But they um, they do crop up mostly when people kind of like if if people don't want to run lancers or acorns or castigate, like they they're the, the obvious kind of go to. Um, they have the same structure points as a Sarasta, so decent fives. It takes a good amount to kind of chip away at them, and I think it's 16s that they have for um, criticaling, so they're quite hard to crit off the table. Um, they've got some pretty decent special rules as well. So they have something called macro extinction, macro extinction protocols, and this allows you to re-roll ones when you're targeting a, a Titans above scale 7. So if you're going against Reavers or higher, you are re-rolling ones. That's a pretty decent ability. Like the re-rolls do not come across often enough in this game. It's you know that that re-rolling of, of ones is is well that's the Griffonicus um, lust for glory ability on a specific time, not just everything. So that's pretty decent. Um, it's also got the Ionic Flare Shield, uh, which reduces all blast weapons against them by one. Um, so all of a sudden your strength 10 um, maximal firing plasma gun is now strength 9 and all of a sudden that plasma gun is not capable of critting um, the Atropos. So it can be very, very hardy in those kind of um, blast heavy metas or lists. Uh, you know, your your quake cannon is only going to be strength 8. At strength 8 you've got a good chance that you might be able to save that hit on your ion shields, you know, which is pretty useful against a um a quake cannon um and the last cutter as well it has is a is a pretty decent um close combat weapon it's um it's strength six um you have two dice and it's got fusion so against knights that's pretty good um it's going to be causing a lot of problems especially if you stick that in the sides strength seven or in the rear strength um eight Plus that those D10 fusion rolls, you know, you can start cracking up the damage, and that's just one one of the weapons that it's got. Um, the the downsides, I guess, is the gravity singularity cannon um, and the last cutter, with them both being strength six, um, they're going to struggle against other knights. Um, you are in the kind of lowest tier of their ion shields, so they're not going to do very well at coming up against other Serastus. Um, with those weapons because they don't have like a big high powered um melee weapon um the concussion ability as well of the um singularity cannon can potentially be bad <laughs> as as well as good as well like with all concussion weapons if you're using any concussion weapon in close combat you want to use that weapon last because at at the best you might accidentally well, at the best, you, nothing, nothing really happens. But like worst case scenario, best worst case scenario, is you knock that Titan three inches um, directly away from you with concussion, and um, it's now out of range um, for any follow up attacks. Um, the worst case bad case scenario is it um, is forced to turn and it causes a collision on you, and you're probably going to end up worse off than the um, uh, the the night uh, the the Titan that you're hitting. Um, Concussion would be good against knights, but again, with it being strength six, you've got to get through those ion shields first. So if you can get through those ion shields, you can cause those shaken results. Um, and I guess its big, biggest downside is that although it does have that strength six fusion weapon, other knights do close combat slightly better. So solid B tier, I think. Lots of good up points here. Um, a few limitations, but I think that's kind of where it should be in a kind of a, in a balanced unit. Yeah, um, I'm I'm definitely in the camp of very low B tier, possibly high C tier. Um, I just don't think there is a specific role for it that other units don't do better. Sure, it's a little bit harder to shift. Is this our first disagreement, yeah. Johnny? I think so. Yeah, I, I, 
yeah, sure, you can outflank it and stuff like that. But then the question is, okay, why don't you outflank lancers? And I know vacuum we shouldn't be comparing you know the the strength of a certain titan or a knight against the other but it does matter when it comes to playing um and playing this game um i i don't think there is a maybe a clear um role for it as there are with with other units um it's, it's a pretty decent all-rounder but you know why why would you, I just don't see what what it could provide during a game that other other things can't really. I mean, I haven't used one myself before, so maybe that is where it, it shines and it's it's decent mediocrity across the board actually makes it reliable. I think whether... the, the, that that blast um, reduction ability makes them a bit more survivable because the vast amount amount yeah. of stuff is you know, the good stuff. You know, plasma blast guns, strength ten um, with maximum fire. So. I see them as being like slightly more tanky in some respects, but slightly worse on the attack. Yeah, and that's the thing is like, okay, it's it, sure it can face tank uh, a plasma blast gun a li little bit better, but then now what's it going to do? Well, it's going to slap do and its, tickle. It's going to do its fusion the... strength six attack against you. Yeah, with what was yeah. it? Two dice. Yeah. Anyway, we're not here to no. argue. We're here to debate. Well, yeah, we that, actually, that's that's exactly what we're here to do. <laughs> um, and the podcast will be ended as of the end of oh, this episode yeah, because this is, we will hate each other's guts. This is the last one. Sorry, guys. Hate to end it on a yeah. on a low. Um, um, I think I, I I just when I see Atropos, I don't see B. But I can see your arguments for putting it in B. Let's know in the comments what people think because. Um, I'm really torn with this one. I I don't think it it gives enough the range that it has to fight at. There has to be a couple of curveballs in there, otherwise, like if everyone agreed, it would be boring. So it'd be boring. It'd just be echo chamber of me being like, yeah. Shall we? Yeah. Uh, shall we roll on to the next one and <laughs> well, just sort of gl gloss over this and move on? Yeah. Eesh. So Yikes. next up is. Um, one of what I think is the best looking um, models in AT. Um, which is the castigator. Um, the only problem is it's absolute dog shit. Um, <laughs> I keep getting pop-ups ruining my tier list. It's yeah, it's it's absolute uh, dog shit. Um, it is teary. Um, there is very little reason in my mind as to why you would take this knight in your list. I had a real hard think as to why. Um, I tried to come up um, with its pros. And a lot of these will probably sound quite familiar because they're the same pros as any Serastus chassis. It's got um, an okay close combat weapon, which is strength, uh, two strength seven rending attacks. That's the same as the Acheron. Um, it's as fast as the Acheron at um, 12 inches. It's got a good scale so you can do the outflanking thing or get it in the flanks, you know, whatever. Decent structure at five. The biggest problem is that the Avenger bolt cannon, sorry, the Castigator bolt cannon is absolutely useless. Um, it's got six dice, or, I believe six, six or seven dice. It, it's a lot of dice, uh, which do fuck all, um, because they're strength three, which means that you can't actually do them, do any damage with them unless you are combining fire uh, with that lance, uh, with that banner, um, to make it slightly higher. Um, but why bother, um, really? Um, it is the same price as the Lancer, um, so why bother? Uh, and the only reason I could think of as to why you would consider taking these would be if you were happened to have a bit of a points deficit and you wanted to include a banner of three or four lancers or no sorry acherons have to be acherons and you were slightly short of points so you couldn't afford like a third acheron but you wanted to get those the equivalent of three ion shield saves so you include a castigator bang in mind you can only do this in um uh what they call free blade um lances so auxiliary lances not in lan not 
auxiliary banners, not in lances. Um, and it effectively becomes the guy who died, the red shirt. He's the guy who dies first. Like, <laughs> this, I, I, I want to love it. I think it's an amazing looking model. And I really hope that some of these ones, which are on the lower scale of our tier list, find a home and a, and a, point in legions imperialis um i have a sneaking suspicion that they will come into their own in that game but in at don't bother um the only reason that i have built um castigators is i bought some of the um lancer upgrade arms from battle blink and um for the shields and i made these like custom lances with swords instead of shields and made them my high king just to look different um because sadly they everything else does something better so sorry mm -hmm. sorry castigator as much as i love you um you're in the e tier agreed um okay. legions imperialis it's gonna have a lot of space marines and solar auxiliary running around uh that bulk cannon is starting to look a little bit more exciting but this isn't legion imperialis and sadly there are no space marines or guardsmen running around so what's the point shield stripping yeah. we can't even shield strip oh yeah of course not even at the strength not not unless you combine fire but like yeah it's yeah strength three no this point yeah sadly I, I love it as a model i think it's a great model it will never see any game time uh, for me in 80. Don't know if there's anything more to say. It, what, how can you sugarcoat it, really? Um, it is just not good. Not that great, sadly. So it's are, a beautiful model, but... Yeah. Are, are we are we ready then for our first night of uh, of the nights? Uh, first sorry, night? Sorry, no, no. First Titan first night. of the nights. We've done a lot oh of nights. Oh my god, what were these? Yeah. So that's five nights down. We're ready for our first Titan of the Nights. Oh, baby. Okay. So next up is the Direwolf. Relatively new edition, which came out last year. Um, I want to caveat that at this point, the box set of um, the plastic Direwolves has not yet been released. So this does not include any potential change which may come on our opinion of them based on the new conversion Beamer, which is going on the top of it. So we we are tiering this based on the neutron laser and the volcano cannon only, and I have put the direwolf in B. Now, so this is the kind of like decent but needs support, and I I would be surprised if anybody argues with this, but I'm sure some people will because I know some people love them, some people think they're OP, some people don't, and they think that they're awful. But um, there is a number of good things going uh, for the Direwolf. And this is bit like even when before we start talking about kind of what they do for Ordax, um, which is significant um, in increasing Ordax's combat effectiveness. But um, their Stalker ability is very, very strong. So that effectively gives them a deep strike ability. If you can take one or two of these and you can get them, you know, even halfway up the board, they can be really, really handy, really, really useful. Um, it's a nice little ability, but you do need 50% cover um, to take advantage of it from e from every enemy Titan or unit on the board. So that, it can be hard to pull off. It is pretty decent, um, but it's one of those moments where everybody gets the laser pens out. Um, so deploying them can, can take some time, um, especially if you're on kind of like questionable um, height of scenery or you haven't just got tons of buildings. Um, so yeah, that's a really nice ability. Um, they have a pretty decent reactor, uh, and they have reasonable shields. So they've got, um, four reactor pips and, uh, and sorry, six reactor pips and four shield pips, uh, which is one better than the warlord, warhound. And, um, the most important thing is that the reactor has two yellows before it hits the orange. So it, unlike the warhound can take a double heat and live to tell the tale. Um, it's pretty well costed. It's cheapest form is 245 points um, with the Volcano Cannon, so it's not that much more expensive than a, um, a war, Warhound, which is good. 
Um, and if you take it with a neutron laser, which is slightly more expensive, it can be um, a game-winning weapon. Menace. <laughs> it really can. You know, this thing can shut down, um, shut down Titans for a turn. It's not like a full shutdown; it's a partial shutdown. Um, but if you come across a heavily shielded Titan, like a Warlord or a Warmaster, you know there is a not insignificant chance that you might be able to shut off all of those shields and save yourself all of that grinding to get through um, all of those um, those shield points. So when you pull that off. You know, like I say, it can be a it can be a, a game winning moment um, in the game. Um, it's also got three servitor glades, so it can repair pretty well, which it kind of needs to because all of the weapons it's got at the moment generate heat. So um, you're going to be rolling that reactor dice um, quite a lot, and it's got I think it's got a command of four, so its command is is not bad. So even if you are rolling, um, you know, a few uh, machine spirit rolls, you know, you've got a good chance of passing them. Um, it's a good, fun little Titan. Um, a lot of people use them in really interesting and quirky ways. Um, I've seen some particularly interesting... Uh, well, I, in fact, I've seen a Vulper version of the um, Direwolf one-shot a Warlord uh, with a ridiculous like 20-something inch charge, um, which it got off, um, which was crazy. Um, Titanus Carapus, I think, and, and stuff like that, just to get it it starts up the board already as well so it was Titan really Scarface. in the face yeah. right it was mutated oh it, no, it the, was the charge bonus uh that was the what was it um organic protrusions oh well, that's it organic protrusions yeah the yeah. spikes to, to maximize yeah. the amount of um smash attacks um it can mm. it can use um its downsides are that that neutron laser can be exceptionally swingy um it is just as likely to do in fact i've seen it do nothing more times than i've seen it do something in games so my point when you get it off it's potentially game a game winning moment um or certainly a moment which will tip the odds in your favor however it's just as likely to um to do nothing um and you often need to reserve that reactor for the use of your weapons you know you want to going to be trying to shoot these things especially the um uh neutron laser as many times as you want like first fire and get two shots off a turn to try and maximize that effectiveness and maximize your chances of actually pulling the pulling off these moves um it's reactors although it's better than the warhound it's not amazing and so if you are rolling that reactor dice twice a turn it's it can get hot um and then that limits your ability to actually follow up and keep firing so that's something else which has to be um considered but like a lot of people say oh yeah but you shut down um you know a titan on a on a three plus if you get a direct hit against it you know, sure you do um but to get that you have to let, let's let say you you're in range of getting your plus one so you're hitting on a two plus if, it, if something's out in the open so you've got a one in six chance of failing there um you also need to roll that reactor dice so you've got a one in six chance there of rolling a machine spirit of which another roll can happen and you know then you've got a three in ten chance of, of failing um you're then rolling the we the weapon dice and the way that we play it um is that shutdown doesn't work on a weapon because weapons can't have direct damage applied to them which triggers the shutdown they have very specific damage forms in the form of um um detonations and disabled i think it is what detonations are zone. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. not direct damage so you've got to roll essentially a two up on the weapon chart to not hit a weapon location um and then you've got to cause damage which let's say you are shooting at a warhound well three plus so you've got two in six chance of failing that and then you've got to get your your further three up to do the shutdown so a further two in six chance so with the amount of dice that you're rolling even though they're good dice rolls two plus two plus two plus three plus three plus there's a lot of opportunity to fail and and we've we've seen that many times haven't we john oh, yeah we have indeed perfect segue into uh, how not to use a dire wolf 2023 with <laughs> me your host um yeah first time i got that titan i think it, i played a game against you our, our local friendly gaming store and toyman 
and um and i was rolling shutdown after shutdown after shutdown and i was like how is this thing not completely busted why are people not taking you know he's manda- mandatorily in each of their games and then for four games after that as the universe cosmically realigned um I barely got a, a single shutdown. Um, and that's the thing is you've got to pass all of those dice rolls. Then that is on your, you know, this this example is the perfect shot. You know, you're at a good range. You're, you, can, you can fully see the, what you're shooting at. Um, doesn't take into account cover or any cover in, in you know, incurring um, abilities that enemy titans might have. And then... You know, to to top it all off, yeah, sure, three plus to actually damage a, a warhound. I'm not shooting a warhound with a neutron laser. Like you're not that. You may as well not have taken it if you're if you're wasting the shots on shutting down a warhound. You're aiming for reaver plus chassis size. Um, I honestly think the best thing to do is to pick the biggest, scariest thing on the board and just keep firing neutron laser shots at it, and you're going to miss. Not get the shutdown most of the time, but when you do, yeah, game winning. You know, that's when it changes. Um, but to do that, you've got to tick so many different boxes. Of course, even if you don't roll. cause a direct point of damage, you've still got that one in six chance of succeeding and rolling that six as well. So it's not like mm-hmm. you know you, you're bypassing shields, so you're going straight against armor. So if you get to the armor roll and you hit a, a damageable location, you've still got a good chance. So you just keep. Like you say, keep rolling dice as long as your reactor can hold it out, and you know you will get a shutdown. But it's it's not a full shutdown, so you might drop their shields. But depending on the earlier you can get that in, the kind of better, I think, because the longer mm. that the game goes on, its effectiveness is diminished because people had lost shields by this point anyway. But if you can get like those turn one, turn two shutdowns on something big, then that is when it can be a real pivotal change. And like you say, just putting as many shots into things as possible. We we thought that this was going to be busted, and we saw it um, last summer. We saw a lot of them in our lists um, at um, the tournament uh, that we ran uh, at the BIC in Bournemouth. When Beachhead rolled around the following year, they were still reasonably common, but not as. And then certainly by our summer um, event this year, they were even more infrequent. Um, and I feel like the the kind of novelty has kind of worn off, and you need a good reason to take these now. Like they are there to supplement your lists and provide something different. I actually quite like the lesser taken volcano cannon um, rather than the um, neutron laser on these because it can it's more consistent. It's more likely to do damage at strength ten. And, you know, if it scatters, it still can hit something because it's got a blast template. Um, but it doesn't have the sexy bypass shutdown thing. So it really does depend on how you're going to do it. I'm really interested to see how this conversion beamer changes um, the direwolf. And it's interesting to see them selling them in boxes of two as well, Like, and if that's going to be a factor in, in legions. Yeah, because you wouldn't even take two in a, no. uh, a Titanicus list. and Unless legions you're Ordax. Is... Ordax is Ordax, the only of course. reason that you might. Um, legions... From what we've seen is less about a lot less about titans so the fact that you'd bring two with you um i guess is they are ways to deal with titans if they're running volcano cannons um it'll be a cheaper alternative to actually buying a tight a bigger titan to kill a big titan but who knows um i think they're really i think people that maybe focus a little bit too much on the, you know the ability of their gun and their potential shutdown um, on enemy titans uh, the ability to be able to just start further up the board potentially near an objective yeah also huge you know you can spend that first turn or two blinking away with your neutron um neutron laser you know praying to the dark gods that one of these rolls is going to go in your favor and you're going to get shut down and the rest of the gang rocks up with uh, with their guns and shoots the shieldless titan that, um, that you've shut down. But from that point onwards, then you can grab the objective that you've parked next to um, if it's a if it's a retrieval style mission, um, 
and, and bugger off. Because by then, shields are down. There's no use for that Titan on the board. Um, you know, you're not going to do anything with its little, uh, little Vulcan baby bolters. Bad bolters, yeah. Yeah. Um, it is very much a one-trick pony. Um, I think Tyr is is definitely very uh, very fair on uh, on it. I don't think it is um, definitely not word for it reliable enough to be any higher tier. Yeah, I think um, you you will often see these in in mana pools. There's often a reasonable reason to include them, um, and that's why I settled on B. You know, they perform a role that, you know, they have to have support because you can't take them that, like, more than a handful of them. Um, But they serve a purpose. They do a reasonably good job at it. um, And, yeah, they, but they might win you the game, but they might equally sit there and do nothing the whole game. 100%. Um, Next up, we have... Um, the good old reliable Serastus Knight Lancer. Um, and we've already kind of touched upon these, and there's going to be a definite theme because we've already talked about three Serastus um, variants so far. But these boys sit firmly for me in the A category. Um, these are my go-to knights. If I have 170 to 250 points um, left over in a list, or if I need to bump up a 1750 list to 2K, in go three lancers they are fast um they have all of the benefits that we've already spoken about with all of the other lancers um but on top of that they have um two things which make them really really good um and the first of them is um it has the ion gauntlet shield and this adds plus one to any of their ion shield saves so that's big you know even at strength nine getting a five up save against stuff is really really good um, you know, down to two pluses at anything um, against you know strength one to six. So it, if it came face to face with those Atropos, for instance, with a strength six, it's going to be taking them on the chin at a two plus on their Ion Shields. Really, really strong. Um, its attacks are um, each one with just the lance that it's got, the shock lance. Uh, shock lance, what's it called? I can't remember the name of the, the lance now. Um, shock lance, right? It's the the Ion Gauntlet Shield, and let's just call it a lance, just in case we get torn apart in the comments. Um, each one has got two um, attacks, uh, two dice, and it's strength eight, which is hitting on a two plus. On so if you factor that on the charge, so say that you got your full twelve inches off, um, which um, you know is is reasonable with a, with no pushing and none of that. Um, you're getting four dice. You're getting another six. Um, dice from just the close combat weapons, so that's 10 um, strength 8 hits you stick that in the flank, that's going to make anybody's day bad, now this thing can take down warlords um, on a charge quite comfortably, um, or at least give them a really bad time and cause them some serious problems, the moment you start putting them in the flanks, you start putting them in the rear, they can cause significant problems and um, they are in my mind the best close combat knight that you see and and to be honest whenever i see knight households often the vast majority of knights in those lists will be lancers they're well pointed um they are reliable solid workhorses the um they also have the ability to shoot out of their shield so you, you've got was it um three of them would have six um i think it's six rapid firing uh, it's, 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 sorry, no, it's got the shields do strength six rapid firing attacks up to I think it's like twelve inch, inches. So even that is not terrible. That's kind of like on par with some of the abilities that some of the other knights have got. Um, they can be insta killed on a sixteen plus, um, which is the main downside. Like any knight, so a six on a plasma. Um, but they're the ultimate distraction card effects. They they are cheap. Again, similar to the um, armages, you cannot ignore them. Like you have to deal with them because if they get a charge off on you, you are having a bad day. Um, mm. Even if you use these guys, I've used um, lancers before as a kind of don't look at what this hand's doing, look at what this hand's doing, and 
use them as a big distraction to push forward on an objective because everybody was focused on these lancers um and that's worked well for me before yes they died but they served their purpose and they did exactly what they needed to because they are rightly if you don't deal with them they're going to cause you problems um its biggest victim or biggest problem is that they they fall victim often to their own success um they go in they kill something and then are killed by whatever they have killed because it falls on them or it explodes in their face uh, that's that's the kind of their main enemy but there's not much you can do about that but if a 250 point unit can take out a 500 point warlord then you're quits him that's the uh, i think that's the really big thing for me is that um a lot of the uh units in this game that i value quite highly are ones that can trade up um and lancers are the the pinnacle example the unit that's able to trade up with ease um Know, the the two hundred and fifty point unit taking out the five hundred point warlord, you're you're winning already. You know if if you've gotten to that state of the game, you're probably doing pretty well anyway. Um, even if it does fall on top of your knights afterwards. Yeah. Um, yeah, just the ability to do so much of so little, a few points, um, is is insane. Uh, there's not really much to say about these guys. They are just they're really good. Yeah really solid and they're reliable yeah um, i mean they they weren't quite s tier for me mm, no. but I, I think that they're a high a yeah i think they're a high a uh, yeah, um, i think so i am i am struggling to think of i would prefer to take uh, equivalent uh, amounts of points with really over the merit of their own like power if you know what I mean. So I think uh, I mean, the, high, a, high A is here for sure. It, it's often these or another war or, uh, Warhound. Mm. It's where your kind of decision will be. But if your maniples fall, you might as well take these instead. Mm. There's no tax whatsoever. No. Um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome knights. Yeah, great little guys. Um, okay, this next one, I, I will be honest, I have probably some of the least experience of all of the units with these is um than any um the, same here. both of these in fact um but so i've i've mostly based this opinion on um looking at their stats and um making a determination rather than actual table play so i am well expecting to be schooled on why these are potentially better or worse than what they are i welcome your thoughts stick them in the comments below this is the Megara. Now, <clears throat> I've gone in with a conservative C for these guys. Um, they have that flare ability, which reduces, reduces blast weapons um, by one, which, as we already established from the Atropos, is really nice. That's pretty good. 10 inches, reasonably fast. Um, they can use that Mechanicum Blessed Simulacra, uh, Auto Simulacra ability to and gain a bit of structure back on a six won't happen all the time but a little bonus when it does um and it's siege claw uh which it has has got um a slight benefit over um the regular questorus weapon in the fact that it is um it's got two attacks um i, th I think it's two attacks at strength six rather than one attack at strength seven um which is pretty good um the main benefit that I could see for these is that from a Questorus level chassis, their minimum number that you can take is two, whereas the Questorus is three, which makes these guys quite cheap. Now, we were talking about if you wanted to get something in your list to allow you to take armages, maybe these guys would be quite good at that because they will come in um, quite cheap. In fact, I think even four of them are, I believe, 270 points um, to get access to their best ion shields, which is i guess quite expensive well i say expensive you'd be thinking 270 points that's more than three serastus what would i rather have i'd rather have the serastus um but getting access to two of them you know you, you are i think it's is it 100 points it's around that kind of um amount i can't remember exactly off the top it's cheap it's the cheapest way to get um not um a knight unit in to allow you access to those retainers um 
on the downside is that you really do need four knights to access their better ion saves. They will fall foul of um, hits with if you do only have two of them or even three of them. Um, and the Hecaton um, Siege Claw, um, that's two two strength, six rending melee attacks. So we said it's, it's not bad. Um, and then the Lightning Claw has got one strength, five rending blast, three. It's okay. But none of them are particularly long ranged. Uh, they're not particularly high pointed, uh, high high strength or anything. They will struggle against other knights because of those low strengths. Um and you know, even if you're getting those rending hits, um, you know, you've got what a, a maximum of two points higher potential damage output than a Questorus melee weapon but you're less likely to cause those you're going to need i think you need fours or something uh to to hit strength 10 rather than threes so i think that's a big one for me so i put these in c i i couldn't really see much more beyond that um i really struggle with these guys um like i say if you have had more experience with them and can let me know kind of what you should be doing with them um or have i hit it on the head really um i can't really justify these being any higher than c um, but let us know your thoughts, Johnny. Yeah, I, I would even maybe say D, considering the armages are C tier. And if you're bringing these, you know, possibly just to bring armages, well, I wouldn't say they're maybe on, you know. Yeah, I guess low C, whereas armages are probably high C. I see. Yeah, I just again, what's it for, right? Yeah. Well, this game, surprisingly, has gone very granular with the knight chassis, which is cool to see because, you know, you get to see all the cool stuff that you get in Horus Heresy and, and 40k to an extent. Um, well, what, what what does this do? What does this do in the... the yeah. Without trying to sound like a broken record? What Again, maybe we'll see some benefit in, in Legions, but I'm not really sure of, of its place. Uh, I, I I've seen them used, like, you know... I'm, I'm sure they have a u they definitely have more of a use than the castigator so there is a use for them in a specific re reason you know a specific game or maybe in larger games where you might take them as kind of like additional auxiliaries or something like that but i don't really see them as core um you know you've got to have a specific reason to take them maybe some just cool variety in the in the knights list hmm. um again yeah Lowering your um, uh, lowering your strength or extra attack. Yeah, is that much of a trade off? Uh, I don't know. No. Okay, so we are. I think we're about halfway. This is going to be a oh, long old crikey. pod. Long old. Oh, pod. let's reposition. <laughs> make loads of mic noise while I shift yeah, my weight around. Move your sweaty t-shirt around. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Look, peeling it off me. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Um, right, so next up we have the Moirax. So this is the Mechanicum Armager Knight equivalent. Um, they are funky little dudes. Um, these guys, for me, are going into the D column. And the reason that they are in D is because they're more expensive than Armagers, for a start. Um, I think they're about five points more expensive um, for each additional one. Um, they are still quite cheap, though. Um they have that flare shield, which reduces blast weapons by one, which is quite nice. That's pretty good. That's what you're getting, essentially. And they they are still very fast at 11 inches, only slower than the um, Sarastas. Um, like with the regular um, armages, they've, they've got equivalent, pretty decent ion shields for what they are. Um, and they can be a good shield stripper uh, with the uh, Vuglair. Vuglair, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Volkite Vuglair. Uh, which gives two strength for void breaker attacks so good at shield stripping um but i'm not sure what else so it's got the same limitations as the armager that you need they're a retainer so you need to have that other unit of knights with them uh, to take them you're probably going to want a few of them like i say around about six i would say at a minimum um and they suffer the same problems with being easily killed and shot off the table um with crits or even um, devastating hits but to the point you made very um 
eloquently earlier on, Johnny. You have to see them first to be able to do that. Um, these are more shooting based um, knights uh, than close combat. Um, the Gyger's Siege Claw is better than the Armager's Close Combat Weapon, uh, but that doesn't compensate for the Armager's Thermal Spear, which is considerably better, um, in my opinion, than the... Um, what was it called? The Volkite, essentially. Um, so, again, expensive models to buy. Um, I don't know why you would have shield stripping armages for yeah you know, I, th I think these the good knights are the ones that you can get into close combat and, and cause problems with um not not dance around in front of the heavier weapons and and take lots of damage in return so in the d maybe you've got a reason to take them i've i've very rarely see these played um possibly because they're prohibitively expensive but again something that maybe might come into its own in legions if you want to take melee knight, uh, well, melee melee armages, take the thermal spear armages. If you want to take helverins for some reason, take these guys instead. Why would you want to do that? Because with them being able to hide behind buildings, it also means that models of that height find it quite hard to shoot past buildings as well. Um, yeah, you're not going to be many shots off early in the game when you want to be stripping shields by the time that you're in good range and assuming they're still alive shields uh you know maybe they'll be good for for stripping a few extra shields but i'd rather put those points elsewhere honestly i mean the flare shield is nice on these guys but it doesn't do enough a, a total critical hit of 14 to really cause that much problems because no. when you're still killing one on a devastating hit like there's you're losing something every turn on the strength 10 weapon if it causes anything anyway. It is, it is resistance against the weapon that they're going to get hit by the most, which is good. Very good. Um, is it enough? No. Yeah, agreed. Right, next we have uh -huh. the, the slightly smaller, uh, slightly cheaper, but equally uh, disgusting Acastus Knight Porphyrian. Now... I think they look better. You think? Uh, yeah, they are. They are good-looking like knights. Arable version. So if I put the Asterius in S, then I'm obviously going to put the Porphyrian in S as well, aren't I? No, I'm going to put the um, Porphyrian in A. The only reason that this is an A is it has got a slightly worse gun, um, and it doesn't have the six up save but it, otherwise it has all of the benefits of uh everything that i mentioned before with the um asterius and all of the negatives so it's a strength eight weapon rather than strength nine and it's blast three instead of blast five at long range um but it's just blast three everywhere um it can do a decent amount of shield stripping um with its um uh iron storm missile pod um and yeah again similarly you you can potentially put out 32 strength 8 hits um, with these guys on a 3+, plus, which you pass with a 3-up order for that turn. So they have an equal reputation. In fact, so that, in fact they are the OG uh, bad uh, feel knight. But they are not quite as rude as the, um, the Asterius. They are pretty decent. Well, no, they're, they're very decent. What am I talking about? They're really, really decent. They're really good. But again, take with a pinch of salt. Check with your meta. Test them out. See if you get the same results. Um, you only have to kind of one-shot uh, one person's Titan one or two times before you start thinking, maybe I shouldn't be taking these. But some people love them. Again, it all comes down to your local meta. Um, I personally don't take any Acastus. Um, and although I have some painted, I, I did used to run them. Uh, with my um, original Ordax, because Ordax before the Direwolf <clears throat> were a little bit tricky to kind of pump out anything. Uh, they were hard to kind of get um, damage out. Um, and I, f I felt that they needed something like this to help them. But even then, I would run them in banners of one and not banners of two, um, which made them slightly less rude as well. But um, now I don't. Uh, it's the last time that I use them, unfortunately. And like you say, they're great-looking models. Um, they're going to 
kick some ass in legions as well i think oh yeah um you'll probably see more use in legions um but yeah great night just be careful and there's not really much more to say about that not quite at the level of s tier but very high a tier or oh, sure okay we're on to another titan oh look at that i know uh, and this is the 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 biggest of baddest bad titans. It's not the biggest actually, technically, but it is the baddest, most sinister of titans. Mm-hmm. Uh, see what you did there. Yeah, you see. Uh, it is mm-hmm. the warlord sinister psi titan. Um, great model. Um, some great abilities. Oh. And this guy, I am going to stick. I think controversially in a and not s now i ummed and ahed about whether or not these this should be an s tier titan or if this should be a and ultimately the main reason that i saw this as being an a tier rather than an s tier is it's expensive so often this is a titan that you have to build around uh, to get it in you can't just drop it in it can't go in maniples as well so you have to be able to feel the full maniple um, so depending on the points that you play, you won't see these every game, but you might. We, we are seeing them fairly commonly at um, um, at tournaments at the moment. Um, their main benefit is that the psi weapons can apply damage directly to armor and just bypass shields, um, which can be really strong, especially with that left hand of darkness, which has got a really good range, decent damage output, which only gets better against like corrupted titans. Um, this thing is capable of one-shotting things like Reavers um, if if you're exceptionally lucky slash unlucky. Um, and it's not only got that, but it's got a good raft of psychic abilities as well. So to give you an example, there is one ability that you pick anywhere on the board and you quake that spot. If you're playing an objective dash grab, you can effectively knock a few titans out from doing that right at the beginning of the game. Um, and cripple them for the first turn and a half, um, really making their life an upstream, um, an uphill battle, I should say. It's got all of the benefits of a warlord with its reactor, its shields, um, its armor values, um, and its slow base speed can be somewhat mitigated by its quickening ability, um, which is another psychic power. Um, It also has Ardax defense lasers. If you remember to use them, so that's like a a little bit of extra cherry, I guess, on top. Um, and don't talk down those Ardex. No, no, they've pulled their own weight. Um, they, like I said, the main downside is that it's an expensive time. It's around about six hundred points um, to fit in, which is you know really you are kind of saying, well, it's it's a Ferox at seventeen fifty or, or equivalent um, at that point, and um, but sort of similarly to the Acastus, it's it's one of those ones that just be a little bit careful with because it this too can have a little bit of a feel bad um sort of reputation to it, especially if you're unprepared for what it can do, because it is very much a it can do fucking what now, um, Titans, because it really can. It's it can do some crazy, crazy stuff. And it's really good. And it's and a skilled person who knows how to use one of these to its best of its abilities will perform very very well we had three of them at beachhead last year in one team and that team won um and i think that the side titans did a lot of not not to take away from the guys who won because they were all very good players but the side titans did a lot of heavy lifting very difficult to play against um so just be just have that in mind make sure that if you're going to field one of these against your mate who you play with very occasionally that he at least had a look at the rules and he knows what he's kind of like facing up against in advance rather than dropping one on the table. The the other disadvantage, I guess, is it's an expensive Titan. But it's it's kind of no... It, it's about the same price as a Warmaster, isn't it? Or slightly cheaper than the Warmaster, so... Slightly cheaper, yeah. Not too bad. Um, Yeah, great Titan. Loads of fluffy rules about them, but my God, they can kick some ass. Yeah. Um, yeah, as a, uh, a mutation enjoyer... Um, no, there's a there's a bit of pissing and shitting, and every time I see one on the table, 
um, are very, very, very good. And I think they're only, for me, they're only uh, glaring downside um, is their inability to be taken in manipulas. So like you said before, if you are taking one in the 1750 game, you are restricting yourself to quite a lightweight or relatively lightweight mana pool um, to back it up. So, um, it's yeah, a, it, you know, it's one of those titans, very powerful. It's one of those titans where I think you need to kill people quicker than they can kill you because if they can get mm. a activation advantage of you on you early on in the game, it can be quite difficult. But with you bypassing shields, you should be able mm. to kind of make up those um you can't kill them you can quake them so that they're not looking at you and then yeah. they can't shoot you you know it's it there really is like a oh you're you know i need to do this well look at this toolbox titan i have right here that can do one of every ability in the game yeah obviously i'm being bitter this, but uh you know yeah well when i eventually take a ginger, ginger step over to the uh, loyalist side, I will um, yeah, maybe maybe look at getting one. Any any further comments about the side time before we move on? Fifty percent of the, the players can't take them if they're a traitor runners, assuming they're yeah. only having one. Um, you know, yeah, I guess that, that's 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 it's the only thing that the loyalists have, though, isn't it? It's the side time. They don't have any of the Three. mutations, so you don't have your twenty-four inch charging direwolves, for instance. You. Oh, that's true. You have these instead. Um, Out to the king that ran that. Okay. Let's go on to the good old reliable workhorse, which is the Questorus Knight. Um, originally came out as part of the Grandmaster box. Bit of an unusual pairing with two warlords, uh, but so be it. Um, and for these little gentlemen, I have put these into C. So, again, kind of middle middle tier, um, probably bang smack in the middle of C, I reckon. Um, they are the vanilla ice cream of Adeptus Titanicus. Yeah, they, they are better than the Megara, I think, but only just. Um, they have um, some pretty strong combinations of weapons that you can take. I really like the rapid fire battle cannon. Uh, the thermal cannon as well is pretty decent. Um, Their close combat weapon is all right and you can take double close combat weapons if you want and they can become like a cheap lancer equivalent if you can't quite fit in enough for um a triple lancer you can have a a, a slightly less punchy questoris um close combat unit instead and it will be enough of a nuisance that you you have to kind of deal with them um 10 inches so reasonably fast um, and I worked out 235 points would be four of them, and that's assuming that you had double rapid-fire battling ca battle cannons or a rapid-fire battle cannon and a thermal cannon. Uh, that's without the, the rocket pods on top as well, though, which you can add for extra points. So reasonably well-costed. Um, and yeah, the rapid-fire battle cannons are pretty decent. I think they're two attack strength four, so really good shield strippers. So if you want a unit to sit at the back and just pepper with lots of shots... Um, you know, double rapid fire battle cannon. You've got four each, so a unit of three is putting out twelve. So that's four shots, good at good at sh stripping shields if they if they survive. So they're all right. That the things do stuff better. Um, I think kind of looking at this now and looking at how this list is tiered out, maybe I would have put these on a par more with the Atropos um, than on a par with the Megara. Um, I'm not sure if that makes them a B though, or if it is to as you said earlier on, maybe maybe the Atropos should be a C, maybe, and the Megara should yeah. be a D. I don't know. Um but yeah, lots of flexibility on these guys. But their minimum size is three, so rather than two as we mentioned earlier on with the Megara, so they are their base points is more expensive. Um but yeah reasonable if if the situation re requires you to save a few points, um they they can be a good addition. Um, I just don't know if I would ever take them over lancers. They're just a bit boring, aren't they? They're just not not that exciting. Um, yeah. Yeah. Have that if you could have a lancer with a can spear and shield. Um, okay. 
but this this kind of kind of weighs back into Auron's point though, isn't it? Like you have these defaults that you kind of fall into, and you don't experiment with this sort of stuff. Um, you know, what would it take to get you to try and? I tell you what, it would take more weapon options in the pack. Because um, if these guys came with the option of double rapid fire battle cannons, and you didn't, um, well, in fact, be able to kit out a whole mana pool with identical weapons, then great. But the fact is, is that just to get a unit of three with three rapid fire battle cannons, you need to buy three packs of of these knights. Um, so it, it, you don't want to mix and match in the units. So if they just gave them like you know either their own box sets like of like similar with the reavers these are all rapid fire and melee uh, uh, sorry battle cannon and melee and these are all thermal cannon and avenger bolt cannon it's some, something like that and just gave you more weapon options or just put another sprue in to make it be- um give you more weapon options it would be better i think yeah 100 um, percent. yeah there's not really much to say about them to be honest um they are just your 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 basic basic bitch knight um Right. Cool. Should we move on to? Yeah, we have. One's favourite. If you have watched Maximal Fire for any particular point in time, this next one should come as no surprise to you. It is our logo. Um, it is the butt of many of our memes. It is the trusty Reaver Titan. Um, and I may be biased. People are probably going to shout at me now, but I personally think that the Reaver Titan is the MVP of Adeptus Titanicus. This to me is an S tier Titan. It is a Titan which you build. A, this is the Titan which wins games. It can do a wide variety of roles and it can do them all really well. Um, it is well costed. That's around 300 points um, for, for I think 300, around 300 for a close combat one, or it's like three 300 to 320. It's really good value. It's got a, Decent reactor, which can um, take a bit of punishment. Um, it's got six pips of reactor. It's got decent shields with four pips of, the, of um, the shield as well. It is the best close combat titan in the game, bar none. Um, and that's before you start kind of like including it in maniples like the um, Corsair or the Ferox, which are two of arguably the best maniples in the game, which boost those abilities even further. Um as well as that, though, it's also got things like Gatling Blasters, which are great for um, not only shield stripping, but um, finishing on armor. Um, the Melter Blaster is an incredible weapon, um, as long as you can hit with its one dice. Um, very, very powerful. And then up top, you've got things like the uh, Apocalypse Missile Launcher and the Vulcan Megabolter, um, and that's just a handful of the weapons. So it can perform like a long range support titan role it can have like a mid range brawler role it can do a close combat um role better than any others and it is reliably quick um because of its reactor you can comfortably be moving these guys at um 9 inches which is faster than the base speed of a warhound um which makes it excellent for objective taking um and holding to an extent because you know it's it's um shield can take a bit of punishment however when you get past that um shield its armor values aren't much better than a warhound so you know it, it can die quite quickly and i suppose if you're coming across a sight item for instance bypassing those shields like you can you know, reavers can have a hard time against a sight item um but it is in my opinion the mvp of the game um it's really well balanced they're really fun to use um great titan and i pretty much always take one or at least you know I, I, most of the maniples that i take will be built around the reaver titan in some way or another and one really important to mention is that the maniples that you get reavers in usually some of the best in the game as well um ferox obviously is the is the one that comes to mind immediately the corsair the old, uh, the old classic. Um, in in, uh, we'll get on to this a little bit later. But in uh, the realm of Titanicus that we're in at the moment, where you know, kind of a, a quite a Titan heavy game at the start, where you're mostly only seeing uh, Warhounds, Reavers, Warlords, and 
over the years we've had you know the gradual inclusion of more and more uh, stuff to the game this has stood the test of time as being really really good at the start and still really really good now in the current state of 80 um whereas you know, warhounds and warlords might be in a slightly different position now than when they were where they were at the uh at the launch of the new edition um God, they can just do everything, can't they? They're so versatile. Um, I think it's a real they, testament to the chassis that they don't need Legio rules to be good. Like, they take the Ferox away, which makes them even more rude, but take the Ferox away, it still does close combat well. You know, it still hits on twos with chain fists. You know, it's still going to cause significant amounts of damage. You know, it, it can still pump out a... Um, you know, a decent amount of shield stripping, um, ripping and finishing on its own without any of the mana pull abilities. It's agile enough that it is, um, it can get around the table. It can find itself in flanks. It can outmaneuver opponents. Like it's, it does. You, some would say it's a jack, like maybe a jack of all trades, master of none. But, but because it is that to me just makes it flexible. It makes it flexible and it makes it versatile, and it allows you to adapt to whatever it is going on on the on the board and it's not even like it's uh you know it's still very good at, at what it tries to do even if it is a jack of all trades right it's not like it's punching underweight um because it's so versatile it is it is holding its holding its own um again another another titan that can trade up um quite easily oh yeah Obviously yeah it's a little bit harder for a reaver to trade up there's not many not many things left in the game at that point, but um Oh, but they can very comfortably take yeah. out a Warlord Titan. In, and just other readers as well. Yeah. Yeah. You if if you're not making your points back on these, um, it's probably because you've intentionally used it as a another distraction card effects. Um which in again it, it serves very well because at three hundred points it's pretty pretty well priced. It's an expensive distraction card effects, but you know, especially especially when you start putting in corruptions and things like that, or legio rules, then these things just become even better. So, yeah, my favorite titan. Um, Texas. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Any closing thoughts on the reaver before we move on to the last of the um, lights? God, don't don't suppose you're selling any because I need more. <laughs> Unironically, reavers. <laughs> yeah. I don't have any, unfortunately. I got to last no, of my starter no. boxes. Oh, God. Okay. No, no closing thoughts. Let's go on to the last night then before we finish out the night with Titans. So this is the little brother, or, or rather the twin brother or sister of the Megara. This is the Styrix. Again, not one that I know particularly overly well, so please um, feel free to school me in the comments. Um, but uh, I have gone with the Styrix. Uh, with a D, and the more I think about this, probably the C, uh, the Megara should probably have joined it in the D. But there we go. We're we this is the point that we're at. Um, so it's got some familiar kind of rules. It's got the flare shield reduces blast strength by one, ten inch uh, movements can repair its structure on six with a blessed auto simulacra. Um, it's got a pretty decent shield stripper. Uh, in the Volkite uh, cheer cheer uh, cheery. Cheerios. Let's just call it like the Volcar Cheerios. Cheerios. Um, uh, with three strength four void breaker one um, attacks. Um, and its siege claw is similar to the one earlier on. It's, it's, it's all right. Um, but yeah, it, it falls into that funny kind of like role of the knight. Like. I don't see knights as your shield strippers particularly. Um, you know, you don't want them hanging out in front of the bigger guns, and it will struggle against other knights because it's low strength again. Um, I mean, the 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 Cheerio is uh, strength five, blast three, rending. So again, struggles to get through those ions, and the same with the Hecaton Siege Claw, strength six. So again, it's going to struggle to get uh, get through rending. Other things just do things better. Uh, if I had to pick out of the two, I would go for the Megara. The Megara is the better one out of that, and the Styrix to me. Um, Styrix, or however you pronounce it. Um, but honestly, I probably wouldn't be taking either of them in other, but like a 
like a for lols game or if i wanted to specifically narratively theme my army around mechanicum knights um yeah again let us know in the comments like how do you how have you used these successfully what is it that you're doing um with the with the styrix which maybe maybe i've been unfair um let us know i think it's Kyroraville. Kyroraville. yeah let's go with it. the hell is that gw <laughs> come on Ky- Kyroravile, maybe <laughs> Kyroraville. Kyroravile. yeah whatever yeah. the cheerio gun yeah latin <laughs> oh anything yeah, more no. to add uh, god no i mean who uses them right like, the, the, the issue of these ones is that they're not exciting enough for people to just go out their way to pick them up not getting them in any you know, battal- uh, battle force boxes or anything like that so a very specific kind of person is going and not uh, cheap ordering. as well Tricks is yeah exactly you know they're fortune um, models they're not cheap um again you can take them in units of two which is a similar sort of bonus if you want to get access to those armages or whatever but like yeah it seems really lame if you're picking up two of these just to get access to some armages well the thing is is that if if i was doing that i'd probably just spend the extra points and have three close combat running questoris instead literally anything else unless um, i was super tight on points but you know Right. Yeah. We're on to the the realm of the war, 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 war wars. War. War, 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 war. Much war in Warhammer. They don't make our lives easy, do they? It's like constantly saying the wrong Titan's name because they're all called War fucking something. <laughs> um. Right. We're going to start with the Warbringer. I haven't included the Warbreaker from Battle Bling, as cool as it is on my shelf up there, but it is um not an official model. Yeah. So it's not we'll break it S to S plus. <laughs> it's really That's... not. It's really no, not. No, it is. No. No, no, no. Um but the Warbreaker, it's an interesting one. And I know some people absolutely love these um Titans. And the Ruptura is actually a really fun maniple to run. Um but for me, um the Warbringer sits firmly in the C tier. It is, in my opinion, probably the lowest tiered titan that they do like regular titan of regular size and this is largely because it falls into a weird place in the points for me and it does require some support and i'll go into that more in a second but it's good points it can fit a bellicosa on the top of it great but there's 55 points but bellicosa on the top can also have a quake cannon so you've got two warlord scale weapons up there which is really really good um you will need to get the most out of this guy to take tracking gy- gyros at 25 points so immediately your costs have gone up slightly um and um its main benefit is that its reactor and its shields are the same as the warlord so it's got quite punchy shields and reactors really good and it's got really good servitor clades as well so it repairs a lot so it's, it's got all of those sort of benefits of the warlord with slightly worse command um slightly worse um armor in places um and it even has the odd x defense lasers as well so it's still got those little funky things of the larger war um the warlord um it's got some fun maniples the arcus is fun um the precept is is a good maniple um the ruptura can be a lot of fun um but um i worked out that the a warbringer with a quake up top melter and gatling comes in at 395 points and when you consider that a warlord with a quake cannon a macro gatling which is better gatling and apoc missile so you, you don't get the melter that comes in at 450 so 65 points more for arguably probably a better loadout and the better chassis depending on yeah it's it can it can pump out a lot a lot of damage but there's so much um so many of its weapons it has available are blast that it struggles with finishing and that's what you really need to be doing with the um ruptura maniple to get the most out of the ruptura for instance 
which means you're relying on things like gatlings, which mean that you need to push forwards um, and you need to get within 24 inches. And the moment you get within 24 inches, well, your quake cannon's now on a minus one to hit. So it's it's little things like that that doesn't synergize well. I think it'd be really interesting if they opened up close combat weapons to the Warbringer. I know it doesn't really feel like it would be particularly <laughs> fluffy, but at the moment you can only take the um, uh, the Melter, the Laser, the Gatling, and the Volcano Cannon. Um, but saying that, I really enjoy it, um, but it is very much a Titan which needs some help. Um, and doesn't see a lot of play outside of very specific mana pulls. Um, and that 25 point um, tracking gyro really is is an auto include. You have to factor that in. I hadn't even factored that into the price of my um, the, my 395. That would make it 420 mm. um, to get the most out of it. It's a fun Titan. I don't take them all the time. Um, yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I, I'm firmly in agreement. Um, it's just too damn expensive. It's really cool. Uh, if, you know, could maybe be higher tier if we're judging it on, um, you know, specific uh, legios, anapools, um, like truly tooling this thing up to be the, you know, get the absolute most out of it maybe there might be wiggle room um but then that is dependent on the other titans you're taking as well on the mana pool well, that, that's the thing though right you you need yeah. that stuff to buff it yeah to, to get point, it you are playing around having warbringers you don't bring a warbringer really i don't think you shouldn't bring a war bringer just as a, a a gun platform i think if you are bringing one to bringing a warlord gun platform you want to make it part of your active strategy okay. so you want to be building into the mana pools that include it and you know get bonuses off off of it um you, you want to have a game plan in mind for using it not just as a oh well you know i can give this thing three volcano cannons <laughs> you know and stick it in a corner and just wait well, for it to blow up i was gonna say even at that point that really good reactor it's got is going to take a, a bit of punishment yeah. The reactor is yeah. bad and it must be punished. In the, uh, what is it, plasma generator stratagem or something like that, and just sticking it next to it and just... <laughs> yeah, you're going you're gonna to have a laugh, but it's not going to, you know... Absolutely. Obviously, that's not what most people do to, to, to load out there. But um, I think, uh, you know, you it's, it falls into a trap of... Unless you're, you're playing around it, why aren't you bringing a a warlord gun pr platform instead because movement doesn't matter if you're standing there shooting um it's know, first it's, firing and normal firing it's save points and take a reaver or spend the points and take a warlord in it more often and than that's, not. I think that's a, a really good point actually it, it, they it's very much in the boundary between a, a warlord and a reaver and both situations it's why not pick the warlord or the reaver opposed to the um the warbringer um, and most of that reasoning will be because that's what my mana pool that i want to run says that i have to take exactly and yeah. at that point you know crack on you can yeah. they can they can perform very well it's just massively dependent on the on the legio and the mana pool um yeah i've had a lot of success with them points. i've had a lot of success with them in, in the ruptura with my lani ascara yeah. um getting those additional charges off and things with the um, the reavers but you have to think very systematically about when you're going to activate those titans and what weapons you're going to activate to get the catastrophic hits to really kind of open that mana pull up it's it they're not easy to use that's that i think that's the one of the main things if you do take them you've got to think about them because they're not as fast as a um a warhound uh, sorry a wall a, a reaver they're not as tanky as a um a warlord so you're kind of, you are stuck in that more of a is it a gun platform is it a you know an objective taker it occupies a strange place yeah it's it's, it's a rough one um and i'd just rather have a warlord shall, shall we move on <clears throat> mm -hmm. okay Absolutely. so the next one is uh, everybody's favorite good boy 
it is the Warhound Titan. And the Warhound Titan, I own an, an exorbitant amount of these. Uh, I'm going to stick <laughs> the Warhound Titan in A. Mm. How do you feel about that? I would argue that they're S. Interesting. Okay. Well, let's go through my uh, my list, shall we, at the moment. So they are the fastest Titan in the game currently with their 8 um, or 12 inches, which is very good. Um, they're very maneuverable. They have three basic. They can turn five. These are your flankers. These are your, um, you know, get in your face and cause trouble Titans. Um, they're very cheap. Um, the cheapest one you can get is 200 points. Um and it has two of the best weapons in the game in the form of the Vulcan Mega Bolter and the Plasma Blast Gun. Um, they consistently over-deliver um, on what it should be capable of. The Vulcan Mega Bolter not only is an amazing shield stripper, but it is incredible um, at finishing Titans. Um, when you start factoring in Ferox or um, Lupercal and those kind of things as well, they can become even better. Um and their low profile, similar to what you were saying about the um, armature, means that they're often taking cover advantages. Um, at least a minus one to hit and that kind of stuff, which can make it really good as well. The reason that these aren't S tier for me is that um, it's their physical stats. So you, their, their reactor is their biggest downfall. So they have a, a very weak reactor. Um, with only one point of orange before you go into the red. And that means that, generally speaking, these guys are not consistently faster than Reavers. Your Reaver can consistently be going 9 inches, whereas this is, on average, going um, 8 inches and 12 inches if you're feeling like a risky push. because And that's what it is. Every time you push that reactor, you are it's a risky push. Um, the shields can... You know, take a bit of punishment if you, but you need to really stick in things like bastion shielding to try and protect that reactor, so you're not rolling unnecessarily on the um, um, reactor dice. Because the moment that that those shields drop, you've got the lowest armor in the game with tens on the legs and the uh, and the body. So purely, that is the only reason why these weren't quite S for me, because they have they consistently do more then they should be able to do, to your point. They, they punch above their weight with those weapon options that you can have available to them. They've got some absolute chaff wep weapon options as well, which we won't talk about, but the Vulcan Mega Bolter and the Plasma Blast Gun and two of the best weapons, pr probably the two best weapons in the game. Um, and getting these guys up with the Ferox, say, for instance, or the Lupercal getting in flanks because they're quick, getting objectives, it's all great. But when they start dying, they will die quick. And this is why, for me, they're solid, they're dependable, they, they're always in lists that I take. Rarely are they not in a list that I take in some form. Even in an Extergamus Maniple, I took a Warhound as a, a detached um, Titan. Not quite S for me. Um, right, here we go. Wait, 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 wait. For the audio listeners out there, the light has gone red. Is why you're wrong. <laughs> uh, no, I'm joking. <laughs> so, as you said, carry the two best weapons in the, in the game. Uh, the points cost um, over, you know, finished out. Um, again, as I've said many times before this episode, they consistently trade up can consistently trade up if you play them, you know, not a fool. Um, and the, the innate ability to be able to squadron um, is is very cool. Very, very cool. Um, and I think it, especially like you are saying again, with the Vulcan Mega Bolters, really can start making them scary. Um, if, you're, if you're flanking, which there's a good chance you're flanking because you're on quite a uh, manoeuvrable chassis. And it's not just about the the, the you know the straightforward speed but the the um uh the rotation the maneuver as well is 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 huge being able to um 
freely dance your mini around the board is always always a good thing. Um, also, I mean, they are in, like you said, they are in the majority of lists. If they were, if they if they weren't as strong as they were, they wouldn't be because there are now an, enough mana pools that are good that don't have hound requirements in them. Um, also, it's very important to remember that, again, it's an objective-based game. And I think there is no, no unit better in the game that binds the, the speed, but also uh, survivability of something that can um, catch an objective if it's a retrieval, return the objective, or just crouch behind a building and hold an objective and not get shot at, or you know, be at a massive penalty to shoot at. Um, yeah, I, I I think they're great, and I think they are um, also thematically. I know I said that uh, the um, sinister, the Psy Titan, uh, was the prettiest titan in the game i'm wrong it is of course the warhound they are the coolest looking models in the game um yeah i just think they are the tournament pattern warhound it's a very trim all you know the fat is it's cleanly cut um wow i just had an explosion of technology <laughs> next to me um yeah the <laughs> it's just adding emphasis to my point um you know there is uh it is just a a, a clean cut titan there's no excess baggage or weight to the points. It is, it is, you know, it's a good, solid thing that does what it is designed to do, which is to get into something's flank and just ruin its day. I think it's it's not not I'm not I'm not negging on them, right? Their command value is is a problem. I think that that's that that's its biggest weakness. It, or what possibly one of the bigger downsides is its command value. They're not reliable on their own for passing full strides to get them where you need to be or you know emergency repairs and that kind of stuff however there's plenty of mana pools and there's plenty of stratagems which help you negate that be that a um was it war lust for instance which um allow, mm. gives you is it plus two or on a two plus you can um, um two, yeah it's plus two isn't it it makes it a, a, a three plus assuming not a princeps or squadron order of course um to um to full stride for instance um or um the mandatum um mana pool, which was with the warlord which gives you plus two to, to command as well which helps and makes them more reliable um they do need a little bit of help in that regards from some sort of third party um See, here's the thing i don't i don't think they need orders to perform like other titans I think their like their base move maneuver um, is is good Strong. enough that you don't need to rely on. Yeah. You know, you're saying that the reaver is is faster. Well, yes, that is if the reaver is full striding, which then you know, um, or sorry, uh, boosting, which you know then locks you out of. Um, I don't know. It's it's a tricky it's a tricky one, isn't it? <laughs> I, if it makes you feel better, these these were for a while in my S list. Yeah, I think I think that these guys are top of are, are top of A for me. I, I'm not convinced they're quite S, but they are one of that. They're, they're the second best Titan in the game. Say so, so, and that's why I think it should be an S tier because I don't think they're that far off of the reliability of the Reaver. But let us know in the comments. Uh, comment hashtag Team Johnny uh, <laughs> 2023 if uh, you're right. And um, and hashtag Johnny sucks if twenty twenty three if uh, shit no <laughs> if you if think you're I'm wrong right. which you're definitely you're definitely not wrong so um right it doesn't yeah, matter does it it doesn't matter what the actual result is now that's that is what's going to happen yeah. um okay right we've got three more left um and then we can go to bed and I'll let you go to sleep for the night yeah um next up. It's the big boy. It's it's the OG. It's the warlord, um, and the warlord for me is gonna go right there hmm? in category B. 
I, I've already um, had some feedback on, on why this needs to be higher than B, but I don't believe it should be, personally. And I will tell you why, dear listener, if you just sit down and lend me your ears for a few minutes. They are great gun platforms. Great shields, great reactors. Um, some of the biggest weapons that you can get in the game which can put the hurt down, and those stre- and strength 12 weapons as well. So these guys are... Uh, um, as well as it, unless you take a bellicosa on the uh, warbringer of course but um you know these guys can sort out a castus which um is, is useful they have excellent armor values especially on things like the legs um they are quite pricey but they are well priced for what they do and that you can make them fairly cheap with certain options as well as make them really really ludicrously expensive with all of the bells and whistles um it's i guess one of its um main problems is it is quite slow um with its four slash six speed um i have seen these run as close combat titans um often see them in and you know volpa and those sort of things i'm not going to talk about that i'm going to treat them as normal because i know you can make them better but that slowness does mean that things like the atrioc power claw can take two or three turns to set up and then not come off and that can be really frustrating um it's a powerful platform but it needs support in my mind um you've got if this supplemented by reavers and warhounds it's your fire base it'll do really really well or in a mandatum with the warhounds to kind of do the work really good it's just its speed means that it struggles to take objectives unless they're in your own half at the start of the game. Um, you will argue and probably say to me, ah, but the Extergamus is one of the most m- mentally devastating maniples in the game. Yes, it is, but you are going to be out-activated. And that cannot be ignored. Like, If you are significantly out-activated, your opponent can make you do things like on their terms and then can react to what you've done they can get um they can really suffer from titans getting around in their flanks so you need somebody protecting those flanks um they are beautiful miniatures they are great titans they can kick out a hell of a lot of stuff and i often take one of at least one of these in my um lists but the reason that they are b and they are not higher for me is purely because of those reasons you it's they need they need help to be competitive and taking all warlords is not always the answer i agree um yeah i you know i think uh at the start of this i was actually leaning towards c i think as we've talked through the titans i have have been brought to be i think Warlords are overrated as hell, and this is someone that owns and enjoys using three of them. Um, they just turned around in circles when it comes to um, fast, uh, faster, anything faster than it, basically. So any other unit in the game uh, besides War Masters, um, you know, are, are more maneuverable than it. Um, and uh, it can just be a nightmare um, and stuff like small knights, you know, all the way to, to warhounds getting around your flank or to your rear, which is very easy for them to do. And often um, warlords will be or late game pieces that you're kind of uh, relying on a bit more now that you're, you know, your your wave of warhounds and reavers possibly have been taken out or, or severely damaged. Warlords still probably looking pretty healthy in the mid game. It's just about making it halfway across the board because they're so bloody slow. And then suddenly um, a bunch of armor start doing ring a ring a rosies around them. Um, and there is nothing you can do. Um, you can pray for your, you know, your Ardex uh, defense lasers. Um, your carapace weapons can't shoot uh, down, um, so they're out of action. Um, sure, you might get, you know, you might kill swathes of them with 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 melee attacks or um, 
know, with with some, your guns, but um, I don't think it, you know, it would be enough from uh, any opponent that you know hardly, roughly knows what they're doing. Um, and, and the when only it comes to the movement phase, the only way around some of those uh, limitations is by taking mana pools such as the Fortis, and, and that mm. means that you are by definition then really static. And you don't want to be moving, so it makes it that much harder again to be taking objectives. Um, if you're countering what your opponent's doing at list creation, you're playing on their terms before you even start playing the game. You know, the game plan in mind, and you're like, well, it's, this guy brings a lot of knights or a lot of warhounds. It's it's very much a titan, which I think um, certain legios get a lot more mileage out of. Um, Furians are very, very good with these guys because of the amount of punishment that they can pop out with their tracking tracking gyros. You know, barraging on a a minus one instead of a minus two, for instance. Or if you're over thirty two inches on a three plus, you can barrage. Like things like that, very, very good. Um, Demesium or Mordaxis, which are designed to tank. These are your tank titans. Like they are designed to take damage and suck it up and and stand there. And if you're doubling down with like Fortis and corruptions and legio rules to make them guys these guys almost like impenetrable, you know that you really do have to kind of double down on it. Um, but the that the there's there's often a trade off um, for all of that, and that might be. You know, is your game plan, I need to table the opponent rather than I need to take the objectives. You know, you need to work out what you're doing going in. And that's why, for me, you know, they're a B. Um, they can be very devastating, and in certain combinations they can be awful, like awfully good. Um, But strip some of that away, and they're a Titan which does need some support. You need to be clever with how you're taking and more so than others as well you need to think about how your weapons are going to complement each other um because often things like quake cannons have got a negative under 24 inches whereas then you've got plasma guns um gatlings which are 24 inches so you've got one weapon which is optimal at long range one weapon which is optimal at short range so you need to think about how you're building it to really sort of get the most out of them it's a little bit easier now that there's a few more longer range options like the conversion beamer which allow you to actually have better sniper setups but um i love the model i like i say i i, I do enjoy playing with them but i from a gameplay point of view i never enjoy them as much as i enjoy playing with reavers or warhounds um and often you know, there's nowhere for this model to trade up. The only way that it can trade up is by taking out more than one Titan, which it can do. However, more often than not, you can be a big fat target for a nice Reaver with close combat weapons who just wants to try and mess up your day. And that's so, the other thing. Everything on the table can see you. you. You know, pretty much most of the time. There's very rarely terrain that is going to fully block of warlords on the table yeah. um and uh yeah just i don't know shooting as well i know um, we're gonna get some hate for this one because you know, know. you know speaking to some vulture and players who who absolutely um swear by them with the vulcan mega bolters on top but again legio rules buffing them making them better um mm. but yeah let us know what you think in the comments we will expect mm -hmm. uh yeah torrents of abuse Two more left. We've got the War Masters uh, to go. Yeah. So we're going to start with the OG War Master, the War Master. And this bad boy, where did I put this? The War Master is going to go in C. So the same with the um, Warbringer. Um, the War Master is the tankiest of tankies. It's got the best reactor. It's got some really cool ancillary reactors as well, which allows you to do funky stuff like vent heat on a 2 plus rather than 4 plus for a turn. The It's got the best plasma weapons in the game with um, strength 11, 3 dice, um, maximal firing suzerains with fusion. And I think the fusion range is 16 inches. So under 16 inches, you're getting D10s at strength 13. Like It's, it's incredible. 
Um, and it can also take plasma guns in its shoulders, which hit on a two plus over eight inches away, which is just mental. Like the, the plasma gun, the plasma blast gun is already good, even with the minus one over eight uh, over eight inches. But the fact that it's on a two plus, it's like a pimped up super version of the Warhound. So crazy. Um, its biggest fault is it is the most expensive Titan in the game. Like you will rarely see these outside of mega games or games over 2k or or, or 2k around that sort of points but if you want to take them in 2k or below you are um in a situation where you are sacrificing a significant amount of support and you will often see them having to be taken alongside like not not maxed out ferox maniples or lupical maniples or um things like that to try and fit them in and the moment those titans die it can be easily isolated like it doesn't matter how big it is if you only got one activation left and your opponent's got five well they're gonna dance circles around you and you're gonna be in trouble so it's great it's really fun to use um i really love using mine we did a great mega game i think it was 2500 points against george last year um, if you didn't see that, go check that one out. Um, that was Furians versus um, Griffonicus. A lot of fun with that one. But purely based on the fact that they're over a thousand points each, like they have to go go in the C tier for me. You don't see them very often. You won't see them very often. They are reserved for specialist games. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. For those mega games, um, and even in those. I don't know whether a thousand points is entirely worth it. They are very good. Don't get me wrong. Not for the points that they cost. Yeah. Um unfortunately, because I would love to have an excuse to finish my, my iconoclast, which we'll get onto. Um yeah. Just very expensive points wise. We can segue quite quickly into the Iconoclast as they mm. are a very similar Titans. It's the same deal, really, isn't it? Um, is it, though? I'm going well, it's, to... It's worse. I'm but... going to put it in the D category. It's mm. slightly lower. Um, and again, probably got people shouting, and I think this really does depend on the Legio that you take. Um, but to get the most out of this Titan... Um, you need to get it into close combat. And um, to do that, you're going to have to full stride. You're going to have to warp displace or, or multiple other things that you can do to try and get it into close combat. It's as slow as it is a as a, war, a warlord, albeit slightly more manoeuvrable on a push, but it is a four-inch titan, six, four, six inch, four slash six-inch titan. Um, and if you're full striding, then you're not using your shoulder weapons. You're not using your um, carapace weapon. And you're obviously not using your clo two close combat weapons. The two close combat weapons are really cool. And mm -hmm. and when they hit, they hit like a tank. But they are, it's it's really expensive um, to run a uh, an Iconoclast. And I think it su suffers a similar problem to the Warlord if you take the Warlord as a close combat um, Titan in that you can end up with two to three turns of setup f to kill one Titan um and and will it make its points back probably not probably more or less than any other titan it is not going to make its points back unless mm. you're going up against another warmaster i would love to see the game the warmaster iconoclast makes its points back because that game would be the coolest game to watch ever it's never going to happen unless, like you said, it's a rock'em, sock'em robot duel between two uh, iconoclasts. Yeah. Okay. All of the all of the positives and negatives of the um, the normal Warmaster, but with the added detriment that you can't actually shoot. Unlike the Warmaster, which can actively participate in the game from the first turn, you are, uh, you know, unless you're you moving for one turn, maybe two turns if you're very unlucky or you're not running the the correct Legio or um I mean what is the point in two like plus bla uh two plus to hit plasma blast guns if if you're full striding all the time like this? Exactly, yeah. right? Um I wish it they you know, they 
AEW um, had maybe looked at making it a little bit more distinct from Warmaster, normal Warmaster, so that we don't have this like, what's the point discussion? You know, if those there was maybe just like extra shields there instead of two plasma guns that you're probably not going to fire more than once in the game. The, the strange um, thing as well is that the Cruciator Gatling Array feels like something which should be on the regular um, Warmaster. Like if that was on mm. the Warmaster, and you can't even change them between the two per the official rules, um, would make way more sense. Uh, having the Warmaster as you know, you've got strippers up top, and then you've got like the, the heavier <laughs> things down below. Like, Woohoo, strippers! Um, <laughs> Alex's <the> weekend. <laughs> But then having something like something else in the carapace, which kind of complements the close combat ability, maybe like a, a weapon with bypass or so, or something, you know, like I what don't know. The perfect, perfect weapon for uh, for that titan to have is um, uh, warp missiles. A bigger Ursus claw. Oh. It's like a it's like a grappling hook that pulls stuff to it. Yeah, so instead of it moving weird. fast, it would like. Like from its chest or something, grab on something, just drag it towards it. I'd be sick. Yeah. Hiring GW. I'm <laughs> <laughs> not going back there again. Don't even send me a letter. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I, I guess that's it then. We it's it's been a long one. It's been the longest one we've recorded in a while, but there was a lot to get through. Too many damn nights and nights, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. It's this game. <laughs> well, that there you have it, guys. That is. That is the units. So what? Wait, the the Titanicus tier list completed as per maximal fire. Get on the old website, create your own, put them on the Discord server. Tell us what you think about it. And um, what what would your version look like? Um, what do you think we've got wrong? I'm not going to get into an argument with you because this is my opinion. But I'd love to see what you think would be slightly different, or if you think that maybe we've mixed missed out a key factor. Uh, on some of these that we've not really taken into consideration maybe this is largely to do with our local meta down here in the uk or maybe this is you know maybe your local meta has a completely different take on these things all of these things can be very possible um but yeah look forward to seeing it and look forward to hearing your thoughts yeah right not much more for us to do let that I... sink in We'll share yeah, this on the cool. Discord when it's up so people can see a picture of it. And um, yeah, thank you very much for tuning in, guys. Hope this has been interesting. Um, like we we like doing the tier list. They do take a lot of work to get uh, to get going. And at some point, we'll do the Traitor Titan Legion's <laughs> ranks, which we still <laughs> haven't done yet. Um, but yes, um, let us know what you thought in the comments. And uh, we'll hopefully tune you. You guys will tune in again next time, and we'll. Um, We'll see you all again very, very soon. Which leaves us the one thing left to say for the nights, Johnny. Are we going to mess this up again like we did last time? Absolutely not. I will make sure. Okay. But... And you know, bearing in mind that I've got this now on the merch, which we've, um, which we're getting out, is is this logo. So we can't mess mess it up. Okay. Mm. Right. Always remember, guys, to go big, go loud, and and go maximal.